Well, Donald Trump has been president for, well, three days, but his foes say he's already violating the Constitution of the United States. A lawsuit filed today says that Trump is in violation of the emoluments clause of the Constitution that bans U.S. officials from receiving gifts from foreign powers. Trump is violating the clause, the suit argues, because his many businesses can be patronized by foreign governments. The lawsuit was brought by a coalition of lawyers, which included former Occupy Wall Street organizer Zephyr Teachout, among others. One of the people participating in the suit is Ambassador Norman Eisen, who was ambassador to the Czech Republic and under Obama and founder of Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, known as CREW. And he joins us now. Ambassador, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Tucker. So the idea, we've talked about this before on the show, but the idea is that because the now president has lots of business holdings around the world, that that constitutes a conflict. And I read the suit today because it's online. It's pretty interesting, actually. And some of it made sense. I mean, I think you're right to be worried about conflicts. That's totally legitimate. And I'm glad someone's worried about that. But some of the potential conflicts seem pretty far-fetched to me. And I'm quoting, room reservations and the use of venues and other services by foreign governments and diplomats at the defendant's Washington, D.C. hotel. So you think it would be a constitutional violation for a foreign officer of foreign government to stay at Trump hotels? Uh, Tucker, I can tell you that uh, these room reservations uh, are... Uh, uh, sometimes uh, run into uh, an entire floor when you've got a foreign leader coming. Sure. We know, and that can be uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Moreover, we know what the foreign diplomats are saying, and it goes right to the heart of the constitutional concern that you rightly acknowledge. Our framers were so worried about the prospect that not just foreign gifts, Tucker, but uh, foreign... Uh, uh, emoluments include cash and anything, any right. benefit of value. They were so worried that that would distort a president's judgment that they included it in the Constitution. They prohibited it. And these foreign government officials are saying, of course, I want to be able to tell the president, I love your new hotel. So they're trying to manipulate the president. I think it's worrying. Okay, it may be worrying. And if it happens, I, I think it'll be a, a problem. But it, it, I guess two points. One, it hasn't happened. Yet, and two, we've had a lot of presidents with extensive business holdings, starting with George Washington. Presumably, his products were exported. Some of them he produced a lot of stuff out in Mount Vernon, going all the way up until John F. Kennedy, who was enormously rich. And I don't believe anybody ever invoked the emoluments clause because it didn't seem relevant. I, I think this seems like it's motivated by political animus. To be honest with you, Tucker, I can assure you, no political animus motivates it. Uh, myself and the bipartisan group of lawyers, which include a distinguished conservative, Richard Painter. Yes, uh, whom I know and like and respect, but yes. I would say is a pretty vigorous opponent of Trump on many levels. Well, but, as is everyone on that list, all of whom are liberal except Rich Painter. Well, Painter, Painter and I uh, have uh, spoken out in uh, defense of Mr. Tillerson's ethics arrangement. We even wrote in the New York Times a roadmap for Jared Kushner, how to comply with the law. It's not reflexive anti-Trump. We were invited into the Trump transition. I went in, I talked to them about the rules of the road. We're trying to help the president comply with the Constitution. <laughs> but yeah, it is not partisan. Okay, let me just read this. And I'm <laughs> quoting now from you. Now that he's been sworn into office as the 45th president of the United States, those business interests are creating countless conflicts of interest, as well as unprecedented influence by foreign governments. You're saying that the president is being influenced by foreign governments right now. Do you have evidence for that? I mean, that's a heavy duty thing to say. About yes, somebody. we do, Tucker. And I'll tell you what it is. Uh, president Trump has uh, businesses across the United States and around the world right. that are uh, a steadily doing business with foreign governments. He has a foreign government in addition to the business in the hotels. He has a foreign government tenants in the Trump Tower. Right. He has huge loans with the Bank of China. Uh, he has a whole variety of but, these But you're ties. saying, and I'm quoting, they, unprecedented influence, but where, how are they influencing him? Where, where's the evidence that he's being influenced by them? Well, I, 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 the founders don't require an influence. No, but you're, you're claiming that. I, I believe that when you are receiving these, that's the whole rationale of the constitutional clause, Tucker. Why is it that the founders were so concerned about the effect of these uh, foreign government uh, payments and other benefits that they wrote it into the Constitution? Well, for obvious How can reasons. Anybody, let I'm me glad ask, they did. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you were receiving 
hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars from a foreign government, and you had to make decisions about that foreign government, could you be sure that it was not influencing you? No, I couldn't be. That is the problem that the Emoluments Clause sets out but to I don't, address. I, I'm not, I just, you haven't demonstrated, unfortunately, at our time, that Trump is receiving billions of dollars from foreign governments or that he is being influenced. But I think the core concern is not a crazy one even if this is politically motivated. But I still think you're getting some. Anyway, well, we're Maybe you'll have me on again I would like to that. try to prove the point if further. If you've got evidence, you're always welcome. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Tucker.